Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Tyson, and today we're going to be diving into the world of elements inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Specifically, we'll be covering how to collect custom information inside of, say, your forms, whether it's an application funnel, whatever it is that you're trying to do here in this case. We're just trying to make it so you can collect custom information that's not there from the start or by default, right? Maybe a specific question to get into a community that you run. Either way, whatever it is, we're gonna show you how to set it up inside of ClickFunnels, where to find the information, and how it is all managed. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the editor here. I'll show you how to set everything up step by step. Okay, I'm currently inside of a funnel here, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the input fields to the second step here, because that's where I'm actually gonna collect the information for the application funnel I am in. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're actually in a funnel or a regular page, or even a funnel hub. It doesn't matter, you can always set this up in any of those guys uh, throughout the ecosystem of ClickFunnels 2.0. Just know that the process is basically the exact same throughout, okay? Now, with that in mind, I'm gonna use a funnel here just for the sake of the video. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do here is add a new element to the page. So if we scroll down and click on add element here, I'm gonna show you the different options you have when it comes to collecting custom information. There's a, the way of setting it up is pretty much the same, but I'll show you each of them in turn here. The first one is gonna be the select box. Next one after that is gonna be input. And at the very bottom, we also have an option for text area. Now it really depends on what you're trying to collect or you know what information you're actually after here in this case. Uh, text area is mainly meant for large bodies of text. If you want them to actually type out like paragraphs or anything like that, then a, a you know text area element right here is gonna be your go-to. You see it's a little bit bigger as far as the area Area that's you know available to them as they type it'll slowly expand until they can you know they're done typing and they have everything in there um, again that's mainly for like large body information or, or answers that you're trying to collect another one or if we go back up this the uh, second thing I, I mentioned was the input option right here now in this case this one is going to be um, basically short form answers you can see right here a couple of examples where i'm using it already uh, in this case where essentially it's just it's not necessarily like a long-winded answer if you know an example of this would be if you're running a fitness group and you're trying to ask how many times they work out a week you can type in a custom number there <laughs> you know uh, something like that it's just going to allow you to collect smaller smaller answers essentially but still custom information um, the next thing is going to be we'll go back to add element here is going to be that uh, select box right here and that's going to be a drop down down, essentially giving people an option to choose from um, different things that you have labeled there already, right? Pre-designated answers that they can select from. Now there's one I actually forgot to mention, which is gonna be the checkbox element. If we scroll down, there's an option to set up a checkbox input here. This is also technically a custom input. Uh, so what that means is it's gonna show up in a different area inside of the contact profile. And I'll show you all that as we move forward, but just know that these are options. Uh, a common use for this would be like checking off that you acknowledge privacy policy um, or that you'd like to receive marketing information. You can, you can design it for whatever you want here in this case, but it just allows you to uh, capture information or you know whatever it is that you're trying to capture uh, just based off of them selecting a box, right? So them agreeing to something or whatever you're, you're after here in this case. Okay, now uh, again, we'll start breaking down these one by one here, starting with the drop down, because that's the first one we mentioned. If we click add element, we'll scroll down until we see the select box op option right here. And for the select box, what we can do is add custom values. So first thing we wanna do before we start adding any values or anything like that is to make sure that we have a custom type selected. So if we go over here to input type, by default it's not actually selected. Um, you have the option for countries and all this good stuff, but the one we're actually after is gonna be custom options, right? Uh, custom options is going to allow you to add your own values uh, so people can select from the options that you have available, right? Uh, with that in mind, the first thing we want to do is actually give this input a name. So this is going to be something you want to make sure is unique. You can't use the same name more than once. And if you do, you will run into an issue where the information's almost overridden with the most recent answer uh, or question that was answered. So if you type in, say, um, hello here, <laughs> right? And you have another input field that says hello there. It's going to interfere and you're not gonna actually collect the information you actually you, you really want in this case. So make sure that you're using unique values for every input field. So they all have different names. In this case, I like to just name it based off of the information that is being collected. So let's say we're working with like a, a, a detail company and we're trying to say collect the, the, the color of a car, right? The color of the paint, um, say paint, color, right? Just like that. Uh, for the value, you would associate what we're actually grabbing. Uh, so that way you can see this. You're, you're only going to see the value on your side. The customer will see the text side. So I'll, again, I'll show you how that all equates uh, moving forward. But 
just know that the value is what you see and it's also going to be what uh, associates the information in, in the back end. So just make sure you label it so that we understand what it is. That's all I'm saying. Okay, for the value itself, we'll make it easy. We'll say blue, right? I usually use the same values I have as far as the text, just so I know what they're seeing and what I'm seeing is pretty much the same thing, right? So we'll do red, red, right? Understand what I'm saying. Okay, um, and then from there, you'll just complete it. You, you'll customize it however you want. You can adjust like the, the width, the padding, all this good stuff like you would a normal element. But um, you can make it required as well. This is something to mention here. If this is something you want them to make sure to fill in, make sure to set it to required. So go over here, hit required, and after that, you're good to go. Right? It won't let them to submit without making sure that that information is selected. There's actually a value there. Okay, now by default, it's going to have this guy at the very top, right? So that way, if nothing is selected, it will it'll be blank. It's not gonna count, it's not gonna let them move forward again until they actually fill it in or select an option in this case. All right, okay, that's pretty much it when it comes to customizing select dropdowns. Um, again, the main things to keep in mind here while you're, when you're doing this for custom inputs is that you wanna have a, a unique name for each of them. You do not wanna use paint color again in this case uh, because it will mess with data that is formatted, formatting on the back end. And, and basically, it's gonna prevent you from getting the information you want, okay? Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next input type or the next uh, element here which is going to be input, right? So if we click on this directly, again, this is the one you'd wanna use for like more of a short form answer type of situation. Click on the gear icon for this guy because by default it's set to the input type of email address. Uh, just click on that. And again, we're looking for custom type. Click on that directly. Now you see in red, every time you choose custom type, it's going, going to let you know by using that bright red color that you wanna assign a custom type here, right? Or you wanna actually give us a name. So in this case, this is the name of the field that we are creating. In this case, we'll call it, I don't know. Again, we'll, maybe we'll stick with the gym uh, or the uh, fitness group idea. And we'll say, um, let's see, workout frequency. There we go. It seems pretty straightforward and clear. Uh, you can make sure you can you know, determine whether or not this is a required field or not. In this case, I'm gonna leave it as, yeah, leave it as required. That's totally fine. And right here, we have the option to adjust the label text, All right? So if we go over here, say how many times, uh, enter. How many times do you work out? There we go, right? And then from there, they can click in it directly and just type in the actual number or value uh, that they'd like to put there, okay? That's all there really is to that. It's just gonna let you collect that information. Now, what I like to do is have like individual text elements above each of these guys uh, as the actual question itself. Not necessarily typing out this right here. This is more or less like a placeholder just to keep people on the same page as they move forward, right? So uh, just to let them know that it, the answer they're putting in is associated to the question that, that is being asked. Okay, uh, moving forward, the next element here we're gonna address is gonna be, we might as well just go straight to the checkbox in this case. Go to checkbox, right? Oh, well, I added it twice, oops. <laughs> okay, click on that directly and that'll take us into the settings or you can click on a little gear icon either way. And first thing we, we have to do is select an input type. By default, it's set to not set, but there's only one option here, which is gonna be custom type. Go ahead and select that, and we're gonna type in what this is for. Again, the name of this input field, so that way we have something to associate it with on the back end. Um, in this case, we'll call it uh, privacy check box. Right, something like that, something that's pretty straightforward. We know what it is for. Um, but anyways, we'll leave that as is. You can st start as checked. You have the option to customize how everything is there. Uh, the icon style, there we go. We have the option there, the color. Again, it's pretty much like any other element as far as customizations go. Feel free to drag it, things around until you find what you're actually looking for on sizing there. If you ever run into a situation where you don't like a change you made, by the way, just click on the icon over here. This will clear and, and or slash inherit uh, the default value that was already there. So it'll just uh, bas basically wipe out any change that you made, right? Just a little hack in the editor here, just so you know. Uh, but anyways, as we scroll down, uh, you'll see, again, there's a bunch of different things you can adjust. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's all there really is to that. The next and last thing is going to be the text area. So we click on add element, scroll down, click on text area. Oh, I went too far, way too far. <laughs> went uh, 
to, okay, there we go, text area. Uh, from here, again, just click on it directly or click on the gear icon and it'll take us into the element settings. By default, again, you will have to select the input type and there's only gonna be one option, which is custom. Okay, give this guy a name. Maybe we'll, we'll call this uh, Y. Um, should they, or why accept? Okay, we'll base this around why they should be accepted into a fitness community. I don't know, the community they're applying for, sure. <laughs> okay, from there, you can change it to required or not required, same option there, um, and then add a text label. You don't have to have a text label, by the way, but um, definitely is helpful with prompting people to know what to type, okay? With that, we're gonna go in, maybe we'll just go with um, why, do you want to join? I don't know, something like that, right? Obviously, get as crazy as you want, make it custom to what you're actually trying to create here, but just know that's how it is going to work, okay? Um, and as we scroll down, again, same customization options that you'll see pretty much with any other element inside of the editor here. Uh, you can change the label position, that's pretty cool. I like it, usually uh, by default, just because it looks like it duplicates otherwise, um, but, Totally up to you, personal preference here. But that is it, that's all there really is, is to it. Now, when we customize, or when we actually perform an action here, fill this information in, it'll show up on the contact profile. So whoever, whatever contact actually fills it in, um, that information will show up directly on their contact profile that you can view at any point. Okay, now once you've made all your decisions as far as what input fields are where and what you need, make sure to save. Uh, and after that, you should be good to go. All, everything will be in place. You can, uh, if you ever see that message, just click on save again. And it usually saves it, by the way. But anyways, click on the, the eyeball icon and now you can preview all the things you have there. I'm gonna fill this in, give it a little test run and show you where all the information shows up in one second. Okay, we're submitting that page. Now from there, let's go ahead and head over to ClickFunnels again. We're gonna exit the editor and head over to Contacts. So if we click on, let's see, click on the back arrow one more time and head directly to Contacts. All right, inside of Contacts, what we need to do is find that contact that we just used as a test. Obviously, you'll be looking for one, uh, you know, the actual customer, if you're collecting information from actual people. In this case, this is, this is again, just a test to show you. But click on the Contact Profile directly. From there, go to View Full Profile. And right over here on the right hand side, you'll see the option for custom attributes. This is gonna be all the information that was collected as well as the value that was associated to it. So just know, see the, the privacy checkbox, just see that it's there as well. And if, it, if they did check it off, it'll come back as true. If they did not, it'll come back as false. But um, other than that, it'll show all the information that they, they selected or typed it in on their side manually. And that's it. That's all there is to it, guys, when it comes to collecting information inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you got value from it, make sure to share, like, and comment. Let me know uh, so I know what people actually are looking for here in this case. All right. Um, if you do have questions, also leave them in the comments below. But anyways, with that said, thank you again for watching and hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.